Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about what feature flags are and why they are important in the software development and the software release process. So first of all, I want to explain what feature flags are through the use of a pretty practical example that we can relate to. And the example that we're looking at here is a database migration. So say for instance, we have a order service and this order service can be like some kind of e-commerce service that's responsible for taking customer orders. And we have a legacy database here that's connected to our order service that we use to perform create, read and update and delete operations against. Now say we're in a situation where we want to migrate to this new database. So instead of traffic flowing from this direction here to this legacy database, instead we want it to flow over here to this new database. And behind the scenes, these two databases are kept in sync with one another. So data that's written to this database uh, is automatically propagated over here to this new database. So how do we change the direction of this arrow or change where the reads are being performed? We want them to be performed off of this new database over here so that we can deprecate this thing and get rid of it. So one way that you can do this is through the use of deployments. So say, for example, you uh, are deploying a new version of your software here, and instead of reading off of this legacy database, your deployment code reads off some config, and now we're going in this direction, right? And now all your new APIs that are coming in over here are going to be reading off of this new database, and this thing is effectively not being used anymore. Now, that's fine. Like, this can work, but the problem with this is, but what if we have some kind of critical issue with our new database here? Like, maybe it's not scaling or something's wrong wrong with it or it doesn't have the data, it's not in sync anymore, and we need to kind of roll this process back. We need to go uh, from using you know this path here to again start using this path again. So how can we effectively do this? Like if we use deployments and there's many, many hosts, right, many, many hosts that we need to roll back our application code to, this can take a lot of time and the more hosts that you have, the longer it'll take to safely deploy while still satisfying in-flight customer traffic. So how can we get around this? And this is the key idea with feature flags. Instead of having a deployment that comes in here that changes this, instead you kind of have this, this config that exists over here. And this config is something that your application reads off of. So it reads off of your config, makes the determination of which database it wants to read off of, and then, you know, performs the corresponding operations. So in this case, originally our config would be associated with reading in this direction towards our legacy database, but we can very easily change that pointer such that instead now we're reading off of this database. And the key here is that this config is something that is updated outside of the context of the application code itself. So you're not having to do a deployment, like it could be a text file that exists in your order service, it could be you know stored in a database in something like Amazon S3, doesn't really matter, but the idea is that this config exists outside of the context of the system and we can change it independently of actual application code. So actual software deployments like you can see over here. So this is one application of why a feature flag is very, very useful and very important. It allows you to roll back and change between these two different options very, very quickly without that deployment. So that's one example. Let's take a look at another example in which feature flags are very, very useful. So this time again, we have order service. And imagine this time order service is taking orders for many, many different countries, right? So we have uh, the United States, we have India here, and we have Canada. And over time, we're going to either add or remove countries as we either expand or contract in the business. So, you know, if we want to start taking orders for Australia, we would add a new feature flag here that says Australia. And so we build application code inside of our order service that says some kind of if statement that says only take orders if the country is in this config. And the config in, in real terms can look a little bit something like this. It could be something as simple as just a JSON object. This is just one config entry. You can have many config entries, but say it's just a, a JSON object with a key here, country allow list, and it's just a list of which countries we are currently supporting. So say there's some kind of critical issue in Canada and we need to disable Canada. Maybe there's a problem with the I don't know, the logistics network or some kind of problem with, um, you know, drivers. We're not able to get enough drivers to perform our deliveries. How can we quickly disable Canada here without having to do a brand new deployment? And again, this is where feature flags come in. So if we wanted to just disable Canada here, all we would have to do is update our country allow list, remove Canada from the config whitelist. 
So that means our application code now is only going to allow orders for India and orders for the United States. So we can very quickly kind of pair off the, um, the acceptance of Canada orders by modifying this feature flag in this case. So that's another very common example of using feature flags. It's this concept of allow lists. Uh, you can also use it for deny lists, sometimes called blacklists. Um, but yeah, very, very popular, very, very uh, common use case of feature flags. So these are two examples of feature flags in action. Let's move on now to just kind of formally defining what a feature flag actually is. So if you haven't already guessed, a feature flag is a practice to change application behavior without the use of deployments. And as we kind of mentioned, deployments can take quite a long time. So having something that we can change very, very quickly and modify our application behavior with is an extremely powerful feature for safe deployments and even experimental testing of new features. And so the way that you practically do this is that you implement some kind of config or you use some kind of config that your application code reads off of to determine flow. And the key is here that you know this really depends on the type of feature flag that you're using, but you need to implement it in a way that you you have branching logic in your application. So if the feature flag is true, then you take one path. If the feature flag is not true, then you take another path. So that needs to be built in to your application. So as we went over, it's useful in a variety of different contexts. The first two uh, you can imagine here. So it's great for feature testing. So in our example one, we saw the database migration process uh, can also be used for other things like the slow progressive release of a new feature that is going to be intended for your customers. So you can either do kind of all or nothing on or off, or you can implement like percentages. So, you know, only release this feature for a certain percent of customers. So that's another option for feature flags as well. We're getting into the weeds a little bit of the implementation and the complexity of it, but really you can use this feature flag for many, many different use cases. Another one like we all also saw was this concept of allow list or deny list where you can quickly change the configuration on the fly. Another very powerful utility of feature flags is through operational levers. So say for example, we have a, well, we have our order service and it has two major functions. The first one is to read a single order and update a single order. And the other major function is to do kind of large queries that you know, are very heavy on the database, but useful in other use cases. So we can use operational levers here to control whether or not these two classes of use cases, one being mission critical, the individual read and the individual write, and this other flow, which is less critical or less important. We can implement a feature flag that says, if this feature flag is enabled, then only support these mission critical APIs. And in the other APIs that we don't want to support, we start throwing exceptions. And if it is disabled, then, you know, the application is behaving as normal. So very, very useful here to control different flows in your actual application code through the lens of operations. And one other thing that I wanted to address, some of you may be asking is, is this similar or is this the same thing to Canary releases? Uh, for those of you that don't know, Canary releases are another method for progressively introducing new features into your application. It kind of is similar to Canary releases, but is kind of different. What people typically mean when they say Canary releases is that they have a new version of their software application and this new version takes some different path or does something different and they slowly start piping traffic to that new version while keeping like 95% on the original version and they slowly change this over. Um, this is a little bit different because in the feature flag implementation, we are building into our application code itself this branch flow. So the fact that you can take different paths depending on the feature flag value. So it's different than Canary releases, but there are some overlaps between the two. So that's a little bit about what a feature flag is from kind of a classical definition. Now I want to talk a little bit about how do we implement a feature flag or how do we, we use one in real life. Uh, and really all a feature flag boils down to is the fact that it's a glorified if statement. And it's an if statement that reads off of some kind of external configuration. That external configuration could be in a database. It could be in an S3 bucket, could be just a config file. It doesn't matter where it is, but what does matter is that you can easily change this without having to do a full blown deployment. And so you can implement your own feature flag if you want, um, although I wouldn't really suggest this, or you can use some very um, robust software as a service products, which we'll discuss in a couple minutes here. 
So if you do go down the path of implementing your own, then ideally the implementation should be low latency. So you're able to retrieve the configuration very, very quickly with minimal impact. You should cache that value with some reasonable degree of time to live. Although this does depend on what your feature flag is and how in sync you want it to be across all the hosts that you're deploying it to. And ideally, you should also have an audit trail so that you can kind of keep track of previous versions. This last one is particularly important because, you know, if you have a feature flag and it has some, some settings that are enabled on it and you change it and then something breaks and then you need to change back to the old version, if you don't have an audit trail, this can quickly become out of control, especially if you have a very large um, feature flag map or feature flag dictionary. So ideally, you should build in an audit trail or use a product that supports audit trails. And if you decide you don't want to get into the details of implementing your own, then you can use some other products such as AWS services like AWS App Config, which supply uh, low latency access, caching, and audit trail support for feature flags. So these are at your disposal to use and integrate into your application. Although, you know, it really depends on how feature heavy you want to go. If you want all the bells and whistles, then use something like App Config. If you want to roll your own, feel free to do that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this kind of illuminates why feature flags are so important in the software release process. If you like this video, check out the other ones on software design practices. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.